Hey folks, welcome to part 13 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be, what does a blue pill always represent? This is going to be one of those staple questions that you should absolutely understand the concept around for the Tableau Desktop Specialist Exam. Now, is the solution going to be a dimension, a measure value, a discrete field, or a continuous field? Which of these is always represented with a blue pill in Tableau. So let's solve this one together. We're gonna to go into Tableau and go through these options one by one. So the first example is a dimension. So let's prove, let's disprove that um, and, and see whether or not that's the correct solution. So one uh, example would be something like a date, right? So a date, if we bring over here to the column shelf, you'll notice it is uh, obviously a dimension, right? It was over here up in the dimension section. Um, but I could always change this to continuous, in which case order date is still a dimension, but now it is continuous. And that has effectively cha uh, changed the color of the pill. So this is still a dimension, but it's no longer a blue pill. So that disproves this first option, right? Because obviously a dimension such as order date is not always represented with a blue pill. Next option, a measure value. Well, again, uh, if I take this out and I just bring in any kind of measure here, in this case sales, you'll notice it is a green pill. It's not even a blue pill to begin with. So that can't be the correct solution. Third option, a discrete field, right? So let's just keep this uh, example. So we're working with a measure right now. And if I right click, and again, you'll notice it's continuous. If I change to discrete, it's gonna turn blue because now it is discrete. Um, and that's with a measure, but what happens if we used um, a dimension, uh, again, such as order date? If I right click, you'll notice by default, it is discrete. And previously, when we converted it to continuous, that's when it changed the color of the pill. Let's just use one more example. So customer name, right? Again, that's a dimension. Um, and again, you will notice that it is a blue pill. So evidently, anytime you're working with a discrete field or maybe even a dimension that can't really be numeric, that always is represented with a blue pill. Um, final option here is a continuous field. So once again, we have the order date here. If I change that to continuous, notice it changes the color. So obviously that can't be the solution. The only viable solution here will be the third option, a discrete field. By the way, if you do enjoy uh, walkthroughs and content like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, what can be used to take the difference between two measures? Would you use a calculated field, the analytics pane, a parameter, or a global variable? So once again, in Tableau, Let's go through these uh, one by one. So let's say I have a simple table, right? Um, maybe at a, let's say, subcategory or even product name level, we're looking at profit and sales, right? So we just have a simple table with my profit and sales. And, you know, maybe I want to take the difference between my sales and my profit to get an idea of cost, for example, right? What can I, you know, what can I do between these options? The first option here is the calculated field. And is that even a thing? Well, if I click over here, and there's a number of different ways you can do this, right? But when I click on this arrow next to the search bar over here, um, you'll notice it says create calculated field. One other thing I could do is I could right click on any field for that matter, really anywhere in this pane, and I can uh, always create a calculated field. So uh, again, we'll just use something like this. I'll right click on sales. I'll go to create calculated field. It's gonna already populate sales because I right click sales. And now I can, you know, subtract uh, profit, for example, and that's going to give me my uh, cost as an example, right? So I'm going to hit OK over here. I should now have a new um, item, which is effectively taking the difference. And how can I prove that? Well, I can drag it uh, over here. And as you can see, now I have a cost column, which is effectively, once this loads, um, it's really the difference between sales and profit. And of course, we can rearrange this in such a way so that it makes more sense. Or so that's my sales, that's my profit. When I take the difference, I get a cost. So calculated field is definitely the correct solution so far. What are the other options? The analytics pane, does that really help me in any way to take the difference? No, it does not. It's again, more so for analytical uh, functions, You know, as you can see here, to summarize things, uh, if you wanna generate a model or do some kind of custom reference lines, things of that nature, but not to take a difference. Uh, third option is parameter. Does a parameter really help you take the difference? No, parameters really just use 
to help the end user input a value and interact with the dashboard, maybe add to the dynamics a little bit, but it doesn't inherently help you take the difference between two measures. Last option, global variable in Tableau terms. That's not really a thing. There's no such thing as a global variable in Tableau. So that's really just a distractor. So again, the only solution here will be a calculated field. Next question, which type of dashboard actions are generally available? And you could select multiple correct options here. Is it going to be refresh, extract, highlight, tooltip, hover, um, filter, or change parameter? Which of these can you actually um, do as part of the built-in dashboard actions uh, in Tableau. So that's what the question is asking you. So again, the quickest way to do this is we just create maybe even a blank dashboard, right? And you can do this with a sheet as well, but this, this question focuses on dashboard actions. So that's why we create a dashboard and not a worksheet. Um, and then you go to dashboard in the menu uh, bar over here, then go to actions. And this is where you can see any existing actions, right? But this one is with uh, with an older uh, dashboard that we built. But to illustrate the different solutions here, if you click on this button here where it says add action, it's gonna actually populate a list of different actions that exist, right? So all legitimate actions that you can add uh, at a dashboard level. And as you can see, you have filter, highlight, go to URL, go to sheet change parameter and change set values, right? A lot of these you might not have even noticed before, but uh, as far as this list is concerned, it's not gonna be refresh extracts, that's not an action, that's something um, you would really do at the Tableau server level, or Tableau cloud level, or within the workbook. Um, highlight, certainly that's something we noticed here, right? So we do see highlight, uh, we see tooltip, we don't see tooltip hover, right? Tooltip hover is not an action. That's really just a built-in feature within a worksheet when you highlight over a data point. So something like uh, something like over here, if I mouse over something, a tooltip appears. If I wanted to change that, I would have to actually disable it here, but that has nothing to do with an actual uh, dashboard action, right? That's the focus of the question. So um, again, tooltip hover is not one of those correct solutions. It's gonna be highlight. Um, what else? Filter. So filter, yes, we definitely saw that it's going to be filter. Last option, change parameter, right? This is one you might not have used, but yes, you can change the parameter, you can change the set values. So it's going to be highlight, filter, and change parameter. But also, if you want to know more about um, what each of these does, I do plan on making a separate video. But in the meantime, you're free to check out the Tableau documentation, which is not only going to list all of these uh, different actions, but actually tell you what each of them do. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, next question, which of the following are valid dashboard objects? You, again, you can select multiple correct options here. Is it going to be vertical, download, blank, parameter, menu bar? Again, as long as you have the dashboard uh, open, a dashboard tab like this, on the bottom left, either, these are all the different objects that you can add alongside um, all of the uh, all of the sheets that you would normally add, such as this. Um, but yeah, these are the different objects you can add. So horizontal, vertical, text, image, web page, data story, blank, navigation, download, extension, ask data. So of these listed options, definitely going to be vertical. It's also going to be download. Again, you might not have seen this before, but it is an actual thing. Third option, blank. That's all, also an option. Parameter is not a valid dashboard object. It's really more so associated with sheet or multiple sheets. It's again, something for interactivity, but as far as uh, dashboard objects, that's not something that you see at this particular level. Again, you could apply it to multiple sheets. You could have the whole workbook driven um, from the value of a parameter, but that's not an actual official dashboard object. So that's not gonna be one of the correct solutions. Um, finally, menu bar, again, that's not listed here. There is a navigation option over here, um, but again, the official term is navigation, it's not menu bar. So the only correct solutions here will be vertical, download, and blank. And again, if you want some more information on this, I will link this down below. These are all the different uh, dashboard objects and the corresponding information about what each of them actually do if you are interested. Uh, and you should absolutely read up on this you know, in preparation for the exam. So 
be sure to do that, but the, those are the correct solutions for this question. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always, be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, as always, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.